My first guest tonight needs no introduction, but here goes anyway. She's been a fixture in the lives of New England audiences for 35 years. But yesterday, Natalie Jacobson announced plans to retire as news anchor on Boston's WCVB-TV. She goes out on a high note, still on top of the ratings, still on top of her game. Welcome to News Night, Natalie Jacobson. Thank you, Jim. So you wake up today, do you say to yourself, oh my God, what have I done? Negative. No, I'm very... You're okay I'm, I'm, It's time to move on. I need a new challenge, and uh, I'm very excited about the future. In March, you talk to the Boston Herald. You say, well, my contract's up in July. I have every intention of still being, doing what I'm doing at Channel 5. What happened? Well, I had to make a decision because my contract was up at the end of July. And uh, the more I thought about it, the more I got into my new business, my next big thing, this boomer business that I'd like to launch and working on for about three years, the more I thought... This is the time to do it. Let's not wait another year. And so there was no I just, truth to I just forced myself to focus and make a decision. It wasn't about a contract dispute, as the Herald said today. It was where, a retirement. I don't know where thing. they went. They just make these things up. <laughs> <laughs> we had no contract dispute. We never talked about a contract. I went to Bill Fine, uh, our general manager, and, and, and said, Bill, uh, you know, I don't want to sign a new contract. I think it's time for me to go. And he was quite surprised. So we never had contract talks to disagree about. Can we go back to those thrilling days of yesteryear, 1972? Yeah. Woman reporter in the newsroom at WCVB. Four years later, the first woman anchor of an evening broadcast. What was it like for a woman in a newsroom 35 years ago? Well, it was new. <laughs> Certainly, that was the time Jack, Hi Jack Hines, John Henning, Chet Curtis were anchors. I heard of them, they, they yeah. were the, heard of those people, yeah. the main anchors there. And I was, you know, the rookie. Um, it was great. I didn't think of myself as a, in terms of gender. Were you treated as something different as a no, second-class citizen? Not at all. Absolutely because of the not. quality of your coworkers, or because of you, or what was the deal? Maybe all of that. Um, no, I wasn't treated any differently. Absolutely not. I was ecstatic. I'd been wanting to be a reporter for the three and a half years I'd been in the business. Channel 56, I did public mm -hmm. affairs, which was a great way to get your feet wet. WBZ producing some terrific shows, but I wanted to be in the newsroom, and I finally had the chance. So but I was a happy duck. 35 years later, compare the quality and state of women in broadcast journalism to your day oh when you gosh, started. Oh my gosh, no comparison. There was a time, Jim, at WCVB when I was the only woman in the newsroom in any capacity for two years. But even though the quantity has changed, when you see the makeup this thick, when you see the... You don't see that on the women in my station. <laughs> you probably don't. But when you <laughs> see the declining neckline, all that, does that not drive you out of your mind? It does. I, I don't get it. I, I mean, this is like new style that you show a little bit more. I'm, did you see Oprah today? No, I did not. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> what, Oprah or her guest? Uh, Oprah. Yeah, but that's not a news deal. Well, I mean, that's I, true, but it just seems like it's, I don't know, the new style or something. But it isn't about, you say, I don't get it, but it, it's because I assume the people who run those stations believe more that that's what people want more than they want quality news, is it not? I, I guess so. How about the quality of news 35 years ago and today? What's the difference? Is it better? Is it worse? Oh, I think it's better. Absolutely, I think it's better. Um, you know, those days, that was the, the genesis of television, really. Night, late, what, mid-60s, we had a 15-minute rip and read. Mm -hmm. Arch McDonald was the man in town, and he did, I think, the first 30-minute broadcast. Rip means the script for those who uh, oh, were sorry, not born in no, those days. No, actually, it means rip off the wire. Oh, it does. My apologies. And, okay. re and read the wire. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, and so television grew, and lucky for me and people who like me who were in television at the time we had a chance to be part of the growth of the industry we you know we'd come up with there was no idea that was too silly you could bring it up to bob bennett and say bob i got this idea i was thinking we could put like a hundred people in the studio and we could just sound <laughs> off about something well that sounds good let's give that a shot so and you didn't get fired if, it, if you failed you know mm -hmm. you lived to Another idea. So it was a heady time uh, in terms for people who, like me and so many of my colleagues, are creative type people who like to try new things. And in, most importantly, most importantly, involve our viewers. The, the, the thing that made CVB great and, and, and it distinguishes it today, in my opinion, is our melding with our viewers. We used to have a five is family slogan. That didn't mean just us. The other part of the family were our viewers. And we tr I like to think that we treat viewers as, as fellow citizens and not customers in that newsroom. You know, we probably know more about you than you would ever like anybody I'm to know. I'm quite sure you do. <laughs> but beyond that, what, now that you're about to leave Channel 5, what did we not know about you that we would have liked to know? I'm serious. What, did you ever think about leaving the station before in the prior 35 years? From time to time. In a serious way? 
Apparently not, because I was still there. <laughs> <laughs> How about politics? I mean, I've only been in the state 20 years, but I would read from time to time, Natalie Jacobson, United States Senator, Natalie Jacobson. This, do you ever seriously think about getting into politics? Well, you know, when uh, Senator Kennedy ran against Romney, mm -hmm. um, the Republican Party came to me and asked if I would be a candidate. How seriously did you think about that? I laughed, to be honest with you. I thought it was funny, and then, but they kept coming back. And so I thought, gee, you know, Senator, if you're listening, sorry about that. Um, you know, that, I don't know, um, but you know, it wasn't, I would only want to do that if I thought I had an, an agenda, a mission, and anyone who would run against Senator Kennedy and win obviously would have a very long honeymoon. You'd have an opportunity, perhaps, to, to get your agenda in there. But there were a lot of factors. A, I, I just couldn't see myself moving into politics. B, I had a young daughter at the time. C, I liked my job. So. Bad Speaking timing. of this politics, uh, if a Democrat was here and he was honest, he might say, I want to indict you for ushering in 16 years of Republican governors in the corner office. Are <laughs> you going to blame the media Did for you that? Elect, no, not the media, <laughs> you. Did you elect John, uh, uh, Bill Weld with your interview of John Silver, the, the, the pe mythical the, interview the, in the, 1990? The people elected him. And, you know, the people saw a side of John Silver that those of us who knew him know that he is a volatile guy. He's got a short fuse. He's a brilliant man. He's very well educated. Um, I think his heart is in the right place in terms of education issues and some of the other issues of that campaign. But it, the, his true um, personality, his spirit, his volatility came through in that interview and voters didn't like it. What's your proudest moment? Is there one or there two in 35 years on television screens? I'm real bad at that. Okay, then forget that I'm question. I'm bad at it. Which one's best? What are, you do, what are you doing next? I mean, we heard about this boomer thing. What really is in the future after next Wednesday for Natalie Jacobson? Well, that part I know. What, um, I'm, what the part I don't know is exhilarating not to know. What, what happens? Uh, you know, I got a few phone calls today of some interesting things I would never have thought about. Ever. Any of them include being on a television screen doing news? Um, Yes, obviously gonna, the answer is I'm yes. I'm going to let that go for a second. But, but, um, but the part, to answer your question about the part I do know, and which played a real factor in my making the decision to leave before this contract came up again, is this idea that I've had. There, there are so many people, millions and millions of people, most of them are baby boomers, but some are a little older and some are a little younger, who are saying, you know, I've had a successful career. I've been a lawyer for you know 25 years. I've been a... A musician for 30 years. I've been a media News person anchor, for 30 yes. years. And it's time to move on. It's not because you're um, un necessarily unhappy, but it's just time to move on. It's that kind of personality that wants something new, a new challenge. And why is that possible? Because we're living longer. You know, our previous generation went to work, probably stayed at one company for your whole life, got to be 65, you retired, you played golf or went fishing for a few years, and you died. So what are you going to do for the Now we, we, have a, we have an idea that we can live maybe to our 90s. And if, you, God forbid, you're lucky, uh, God forbid, God willing that you're lucky enough to be healthy, you, you have a chance at a whole new endeavor in life that no previous generations didn't have. So my point is to create a situation, a community, uh, multimedia, online as well, where people come together and find their next big thing. I can't remember. Did I ask you the question if any of those offers involved broadcast journalism on television? No. I didn't ask that question. No. Natalie Jacobson, it's been a joy. <laughs> watching you all these years. I hope we get to watch you more in the future. Jim, it's always good to be with you. Nolly, thanks so much.